Hello, hello, rock stars, and welcome back. As I mentioned in my post earlier today, um, I didn't do a good job of keeping track of the fact that March had five weeks. So as you may have noticed, we are off cadence with when I'm supposed to be live in this group. Um, we'll fix that soon, I guess. <laughs> But in the meanwhile, we're here, and I am so very excited because we got new fabric in. This is one of quite a few new fabrics that has come in. Uh, this is Monarch Grove from Fabulism, and I was chatting with my girl, Kate Tony, and she is getting ready to make a Dogwood Blossoms quilt for some stuff she's working on, and I was like, man, I haven't made a Dogwood Blossoms in a while, so I have paired up the different fabrics from this line, and we are going to make a nine block dogwood blossoms. And I'm just so excited. So if you are new or if you haven't been around in a while, or if you just want to say, hey, be sure to say hi in the chat, introduce yourself in the caption of this video. I have dropped links to the shop where you can find all of this fabric and other new fabrics, new patterns, all the things, and a direct link to the dogwood blossoms pattern. Right now it is available as a PDF download. We will have printed copies in the future, but I don't have a firm date on that yet. So we're just going to work from that. I've printed my copy of the PDF because, I, and I was really relieved recently to find out that I'm not the only person who does this. Um, Brittany at Lo and Behold does this too. I'm going to follow my own directions <laughs> so that I know what I'm doing, which is going to be great. Um, now there are handy dandy diagrams uh, for the cutting instructions in here. So if you're like, okay, it says fat quarter, but how do I trust that it's a fat quarter? I did all of that pre-math for you. We are going to be a-okay. All right. So for all of these, I've chosen a lighter and warmer color for my flower. And then I have chosen darker, cooler colors for my background. And this is going to be just scrappy and fun. Um, I'm going to plug in my hot little iron over here. And I am going to press these. Let me grab my flatter because they're going to have little creases in them. We're going to press these real quick and then we will start cutting. Doo, 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 doo. I also am going to pull up the group on my phone in just a second and make sure this video is pinned for y'all so it is nice and easy to find. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. This of course is pressing spray from Soak. We keep the unscented on hand here in the shop because that's just easy. But my personal favorite is the mint for what that's worth. Okay, let me get this pinned for y'all so it's easy for y'all to find. I know a lot of y'all catch these on replay. Oh, I better click into. Do do do, hello Winifred. Oh dear, I'm getting feedback on my own stuff. Here we go, all right. Ooh, that is a pretty quilt, Lulu. I love that. All right, my live is not showing up. No wonder y'all can't find me. Oh, technology. I'm unimpressed with you. It's like, it has a little circle around my name to show that I'm live but it's not letting me see the video itself. Okay, try again. You know, you would think that after all this time and all these lives that I you would, think. would know what the heck I'm doing, but apparently not. Let's see, why is it? This is ridiculous. See, oh, that might be why. Maybe? Nope. Well, we're going to hope that I can find myself later, and I will pin it later. <laughs> Francie Jo, hello. Here, I'm going to try opening it on my computer since it's not cooperating on my phone. Let us see. That's not what I wanted to click on. Do, 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 do. No. How charming. Is there like a new tab featured? No. Media? No. All right, well, I guess we're gonna hope that y'all see the notification and we're gonna carry on because I wanna cut out some fabric. <laughs> Bye, Ellery. 
I'll see you next week, Monday. Weird. All right. <laughs> but listen, you got stuff. I get it. <laughs> All right. So I, like I said, I'm going to get these in quick press and then we are going to get going. Oh, you know what I can do? <gasps> Y'all. I just found it today and I'm actually getting ready to take it to my house because I need it there for a project I'm working on. But in the meanwhile, we can use it really quick. If y'all have never used a laundry rack as part of your quilting process, I'm gonna introduce this to you. So folding white laundry rack, right? Cheap and expensive, lightweight, all the things. I love to use these for when I press fabric and then I don't, you know, have a place to like lay it out and I want it to stay flat for a second, right? And you can just hang it over the rack like so. So we will hang these in the little pairs I organized them into. Look how pretty this is. This is a fun way to, for me to get to play show and tell with all these fabrics too, look. So this is one of the darker stripies. Just, you know, giving everybody a quick little pressy press. Y'all know I don't always do this, right? Like, just, just in case you are laboring under the illusion that I'm fastidious about these things, let me just remind you that I'm not. It is extremely tempting to me to just cut straight into this fabric and be like, whatever, those wrinkles will quilt out later. That's just, you know, not best practice. We're, I'm, I'm trying to work on that about myself, right? Like, like I've been quilting for a long time now. I should probably do things properly. Okay, so backstory on this. So I ended up deciding to do dogwood blossoms because Kate was like, you haven't made one of those in a while. I'm going to make one. Do you want to make one, right? But the other thing that was part of this process, look at this lovely fabric, is I took a look at this line and I was like, you know what? There's a lot of really pretty pinks and purples in that line. And it has been a while, i.e. I had never have. It's, you know, it's time for me to do something for my team purple rock stars. So rock stars, I have focused on the purple fabrics as the flowers in this for you. Just thought you should know. It's because I love you. I want you to know that, you know, I think you're fabulous, even though I don't love purple. <laughs> All of those good things. Also, they're paired with this nice goldenrod color. Look how pretty. So nice. So nice. I wonder how far we can get on this. I'm so excited. How very fun. Bum, ba, da, ba. This, as you can imagine, is one of my favorite fabrics of the line. All right, one of Fred and Francie Joe and anyone else who is tuned in with us, what are y'all up to? What are you working on? All of those good things. I turned my little iron down a little bit so that it doesn't get so hot on the silicone pad sitting on this piece of furniture, but I can feel like it's, it's not quite getting the wrinkles out as quickly as I would like. And I'm like, mm, we're going to live with it. Going to live with it. So I've been doing a lot of long arming. Let's see. Oh, hang on. Before I say that, love the dog with blossoms patterns, nice big blocks. Yes. That's exactly how I feel for Nancy Joe. So I just finished my uh, Astra queen size that turned into kind of a king size. Look at these delicate little stripes. Is that not a dream? I might have to bind to this quilt in these. Like The stripes are just so good. Um, so Astra had a lot of little fiddly bits and then I'm finishing up my 100 days, 100 blocks. Um, and I've got like three blocks left, I think, but then I'm adding little one inch frames around all the blocks. So I've got like a lot of fiddly stitching going on. And so I was like, I really need something with some nice, big, quick blocks. I want to, you know, move, move through a project quickly, have a little bit of a palette cleanse 
in the midst of all this fiddly work. So I agree with you completely about Dogwood Blossoms. One of her says, last of the t-shirt quilts before I retire from sewing for people. That's amazing, Winifred. What a big accomplishment. What a big accomplishment. Oh my gosh, Winifred says, looking forward to finally sewing your patterns later this summer. You know, Winifred, your timing is perfect because I'm trying to get back into sewing my patterns as well. Uh, though we did get some new patterns into the shop today that I'm also pretty excited about. So uh, it's hard because I love being able to support other designers. It's a really fun way to collaborate, um, especially since, you know, we've got all this fabulous fabric these days and, you know, we're doing FMQ and ruler quilting, that it's a fun way to collaborate to sew other people's patterns. But I'm like, you know what? I should, I should show some of my own work some love as well. That fat quarter is not square. Let's see. Phrase suggested, still working on my block of the month UFO. I'm on block 11. The pattern is from 2006, pre-FMQA. That's amazing, Francie Jo. Um, not to date all of us, but I was graduating from middle school in 2006. How upsetting is that? Beverly says, finally got to connected. Oh my gosh, you're working on a mechanic theme quilt that started with the panel. That's amazing. Um, yeah, Facebook seems to not be making that link easy to find today, which is very, very frustrating. This is not my fabric. Uh, this is from Fabulism. This is their new Monarch Grove line. And um, we love their fabric. They, they just, I don't know. They, I feel like they're doing something that, I don't know that it is fresh in the sense of like dusty colors and like different woven textures are not a new invention. Um, but it feels really fresh to me after, you know, the whole time I've been quilting, the trend has been very like bright, bold prints. And I love a good bright, bold print. You all know that. Um, and then solids. And now just, um, you know, seeing something that, that just feels a little bit different is really nice. I'm enjoying it. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> wow. I feel like allergy season started really early this year because of all the rain we had, but we're actually getting to like proper spring allergy time now. And let me tell you, I am suffering. I've been very sneezy. It's very upsetting. Um, yes, Winifred, you're also in Ruler Quilting Academy, which I love. So good. Um, I did that little bonus unit on the long arm this weekend, which was big fun. I, that was on a quilt from Marcy, which I was really excited to get to, like, also show off to y'all because her quilt was so pretty. Look at these. Oh, these stripes are so good. Where's my purple people? This one's for you. Look at that. That is such a nice color palette. So the other thing here, let's go on a little show and tell moment. Bum, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Okay, so... The other thing, so here's all the Monarch Grove fabrics. We have yardage, bum, ba -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. and we have bundles. Um, these, of course, are the trellis wovens, which we've had in. These are really great backgrounds, and these colors all talk to the new fabrics. There are two other new Fabulism lines, too. So this one is the ginghams, which, like, how, how perfect, right? Again, notice that these colors all coordinate, and then there's the everyday chambray. So this is why I jumped up because um, these are all the colors of those stripes in these in these stripey fabrics that I've been showing you. So if you wanted something that reads solid mixed in with these really bold textures and color combinations of Monarch Grove, you absolutely can mix Everyday Chambray in there. And actually, Kate Pony is planning on probably using Everyday Chambray for her uh, Dogwood Blossoms, which is going to be really cool. So I will be creating a very loud version of this quilt and she will be creating a much quieter version of this quilt which is just cool all right so pressing this all right so speaking of ruler work and long arming and all of those things that is that's what i'm 
like actually doing with most of my time right now is I have several quilts that I'm getting to custom quilt that are here in the shop. And it is so exciting. It's fun to get to spend that time quilting. I'm trying to remember to take videos of my process to share with y'all. Um, I think we're probably going to have a little specialty workshop here soon. For those of you who are on long arms, I'm thinking about putting together a little specialty workshop um, for long arming quilts that have applique and how I handle that. Cause I've got several in the queue here with applique and it's just a little bit of a different thought process. Here's this, this is a like nice weight. I haven't actually looked up the exact weight. Um, but I was telling Hillary, I was like, can we see if I could use that to make a pair of shorts, like summer shorts? I was like, I don't know if it's heavy enough, but if it is, I want to sew with it because it feels so nice. It's very soft. Say so month 11, month five had 25 blocks. That's wild. That's a lot of blocks. <laughs> what block of the month is this? This, is, this sounds very intense. This sounds like a very advanced block of the month. I just started getting uh, sneak beeks back from a collaborator about a future block of the month around here. And uh, yeah, so, but it's not that intense. Look at this, look at this, look at this. <gasps> okay, sorry. I'm just gonna be hyper about this fabric the whole time. This um, color combination, well, okay, not the color combination, but the theme a bit is reminding me of the original Dogwood Blossoms, which um, those, some of y'all who are on here will remember. Uh, that I did with fabrics from Corey Yoder and I did all the like warm floral prints as the flowers and all the cool floral prints as the background. I'm following a very similar set of rules this time. So using those warmer colors in front, the cooler colors in the background. And then I've pulled out this kind of light orange to be my fabrics or my flower centers. Pretty excited about that. I think that's how I'm going to do it. Let me look at this. Or do I just want to let the background show in the center? You know what? I might just let the background show. You know, I'm just making decisions on the fly here. Did I hold this one up? Ta-da. This is like a, I don't know. I would describe it as like a Payne's gray. It's, it's gray, but it's a blue gray. So it's not a navy. It is definitively gray, but it leans blue in that. This again is a little bit of a thicker hand to it. It's gonna be really fun to work with. I'm really excited. All right, I need to be careful not to flip my chair out from behind me. Some of y'all have seen me do that. It is very scary. I'm running out of places. All right, we're gonna we're gonna press seven of these, and then we're gonna start cutting because that's how many fit on my rack. And then we can press more after we cut for a little while. Francie Joe says Stonehenge meets Jamestown. The blocks are not too bad. Twelve inch finished blocks. Life just gets in the way sometimes. That's still a lot of blocks. <laughs> Hot dog. But I get that about life getting in the way. Often that is that is the hardest part, right? Like I definitely am looking at that with, you know, 100 days, 100 blocks. Like each block is not particularly hard. You know, it takes 30 to 45 minutes as I like choose colors, choose fabrics, work out any fussy cutting, et cetera. It's just sitting down to do it that can be the real, the real hard thing there. I love this. See, wouldn't these just be great shorts? Like, I mean, heck, I could wear it with this t-shirt. They would be fantastic, right? I say that like I know how to sew shorts. I've helped Hillary film the Pietra section for Garment Sewing Academy, so I definitely feel like an expert now. Spoiler, I'm not an expert. <laughs> but I'm excited to learn. Gonna, gonna go through and make mine and figure it out. 
Because I want to know how to do that, too. Oh, I'm going to cough. <coughs> All right. Do, 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 do. All right. Let me unplug the iron. I'm going to unplug it and move it out of the way so that I am not at risk for managing to burn myself. Because now I'm going to start some cutting. Let us... I'm going to scoot this in a wee bit. I think I'm actually going to put my cutting mat down on this lower table. Okay, so referring to my diagram, this is my 18 inch side. Yep, okay. Put it this way. I might even be so bold as to cut out and then sew each of these blocks. Let's see. Is this ruler, this ruler is not wide enough. Hold please, I need to go get a bigger ruler. Do, 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 do. Yes, I am kind of jerry-rigging my space to be able to do all of these steps right here, but how fun is it to actually be able to do something together? I haven't done this in forever, right, Javi? Right. Feels a bit like a full circle moment. Um, you know, I've been thinking about that as we are now, you know, quickly entering, you know, post pandemic. And I don't like how that fabric is positioned. Mm -hmm. Because are you square? I'm feeling like probably not. I did not cut these uh, fat quarters. And as I am looking at them, I am feeling the need to give you all that caveat. We bought these pre-cut. And I, they are not overly square. But I can't tell how much of that really has to do with the fact that, oh, that did not go well. Uh, really has to do with the fact that these fabrics have a, a little bit of wiggle on them because of how they're woven. I don't know. I feel like I was able to cut that reasonably well just now. So we'll see. Um, it would be such a cute summer skirt. You're absolutely right, Winifred. It would. All right. We're going to fold to cut because it's going to be safer. Safety first. I'm not always good at safety first. Um, anyway, I've been thinking about, you know, as we are, you know, kind of post pandemic at this point, right? And I put that in problem quotes because I understand that there are plenty of ways in which we're not, right? Um, but it is kind of wild to think about all the things that have changed over the last three years and all the things that have stayed the same. I mean, some friends who Joe and I are still here hanging out on Facebook Live, what can I say? Uh, but also like the things that have come full circle, right? Like actually getting to like hang out and sew. Did I go the right direction on that? Yes, I did which is really exciting, right? And I, I don't know. I don't really have anything profound to say about that as much as I wish I had some like, and so here's my profound takeaway. Um, I think really where I'm focusing on trying to be with all of it is, is taking those moments of gratitude, right? Like we talk about that a lot anytime we're all together as rock stars in our virtual space. Um, but taking that time of gratitude of all this stuff happened and, like, we're still here, right? Like, we're still doing this thing. And that's pretty nifty when you think about it, you know? All right. So then I need definitely some extra leftover from these. But it's like little bits. It's not like, I'll show you what's left over from the fat quarter here. I'll 
set that to one side so I can show y'all when I finish cutting where it all lands. My rotary blade uh, needs to be changed. So friendly, just, you know, suggestion if you haven't changed your rotary blade in a minute to think about doing so. All right. So I have center of my block, half square triangle pieces. Um, I'm about to subcut this to be part of my tri-rex, right? And this is my leftover. So you have a little bit of wiggle room, but not like a lot of wiggle room, okay? So not super wasteful, which is nice, but it also means, you know, like bear that in mind as you're, as you're working that, you know, you don't have, it's not like rhythm where if you make the rhythm quilt with fat quarters, right? This one of Brittany's patterns. Um, yes, this is my background. I'm making tri units. Okay. Um, it's not like, uh, Brittany's pattern, Brittany's rhythm quilt, where if you, nope, come on, let's make sure this is going to fit. Do, 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 do. Why wasn't it fitting the other way? I don't know, but we'll cut it this way. Um, if you make it with fat quarters, then you have like a whole fat eighth left over at the end. We're not going to have that much wiggle room on this, but you've got a little bit if you need it. Okay. So try Rex. If you're not familiar, I use a ruler set. Okay. I got to go get another rotor cutter. Hang on. I'm going to take my own advice and use a sharper blade, and then I can actually talk effectively. But try Rex, if you're not familiar, they're also called a triangle and a square, right? Or a triangle and a rectangle because, you know, all squares are rectangles. Kick it back to geometry class. Um, it comes as a set. And you have your tri tool. That's the triangle part, right? You can like sort of see it as I'm holding it up. And then you have a Rex tool. Do, do, do. You can sort of see it. So this is what makes it turns this into a square, right? So you use this as a cutting template. And we cut from a strip of fabric. And you place your, your triangle point up, right? And you cut. And then you simply pivot this upside down. So you go back and forth in order to maximize what you can cut out of a strip of fabric, okay? And what's really, you know, like earth shattering about this is that it just has a lot less waste. So there is a tutorial on my blog and it's linked from the Dogwood Blossoms pattern, incidentally. Um, there is a tutorial on my blog for doing this without the specialty ruler, but you need more fabric to do it that way. So you have less waste using the Tri-Rex tool. And that is just really, really handy for this pattern. Okay. All right. So I have my background cut out for this first block. Now, let's cut out my flower. You know, and then we could just make a make a block real quick, because why not? Why the heck not? When have we done something that fun and spontaneous feeling? All right, I pressed these, and yet this still has a little folded edge. God bless it. We'll just go from the other side. We'll trim the salvage off. All right. Remember, use your ruler to measure, not your mat. So I know that y'all can't see super well down here. You probably can't see what I'm cutting at all. Um, but make sure you're paying attention to the markings on your ruler, not your mat, in order to get squarer cuts. All right, we're going to start by cutting that strip that we'll subcut in a second. Okay. And then... We're going to cut our square and a square pieces. We'll subcut that in a second. And then these are going to be our half square triangles. Ooh, I should have grabbed my block lock for these half square triangles. I will do that when we get there. 
Bum, bum, bum. All right. So leftover, there was that little strip that I just put over there. That will go in the trash shortly. All right. So here are our half square triangle bits. Now I recognize some of these are stripes and whatnot, so they're directional. Um, I'm very intentionally not caring about that for, for two reasons. Uh, one, I almost never care about directionality because please see previous notes about me not being the most fastidious quilter that ever existed. Um, but also um, I've had the delight and y'all have probably seen some pictures on Instagram by now. Um, of seeing uh, Brittany make mosaic star out of this fabric and um, seeing a little kind of sneak peek a bit of how this fabric uh, cuts up and how lovely it is. And that the directionality like really wasn't, once you chopped it all up and sewed it back together, that like wasn't the big priority. Where did I put my squares? Here they are. All right, so now we're gonna do these Rex bits. Now, the Rex units, because there are two of them per block. This is super important, okay? You need two sides to every block. So I'm gonna fold this in half, all right? Because they have to be mirror image. And then I will cut out my recs four times, okay? And I am just gonna do a little, you know, quick, eyeball to make sure it's going to fit. Okay, we're good. So I just kind of flip my ruler down the strip of fabric before I actually make any cuts to make sure it's all going to fit. Now the other thing is that this Rex has a tiny little notch at the top. I know that's very challenging to see. I'm trying to line it up somewhere where you might be able to see it. Cut that notch off as you're cutting these it will make it a little bit easier to line up these pieces when we assemble the unit, okay? So just take that little corner off as you're going. So when I have these cut out, I have two mirror image units and see how they have that little notch missing at the top? And I need three more pairs. Um, these are yarn dyed, so if you were to cut these in a strip and then be trying to reverse them, you might run into fewer problems, but if you are working with fabric that has a right side and a wrong side and you just laid this as a flat strip and went down and cut eight of these out, um, half of them, when you go to assemble your blocks, the wrong side of the fabric would be showing, right? So that's why for the tri units, it's a little more efficient. Um, to lay the fabric flat because that's a wider unit. You don't want to lose fabric along your fold. But for these, you really do want to fold it to make sure that you get mirror image pairs. Okay? All right. Yo, we've cut out a whole block. Look at this go. When have we done this? When have we done this? This is like throwback to the good old days, right? All right, come over here to my B79 with me. Let me turn the page in my pattern. And we're gonna follow our directions, okay? So we're starting with those Tri-Rex units. Hold on to your butts, folks. I am piecing with 40 weight thread. Mostly because I'm not gonna take the time to change what's in the machine. And Hillary was just sewing clothes. So, you know. You can join me in being astonished. For um, really tiny piecing, right? Like if we were doing, you know, my classic example, Bonnie Hunter quilt, right? So some something that has more like two to three inch finished units. By the way, Hillary taught me this trick of using tweezers to pull that thread through and it is changing my life, okay. So if you're doing something that is very um, precise and has you know very small finished pieces, you would want to consider switching to 50 weight uh, because you're gonna 
have less risk of losing any little bit of fabric to your uh, seam allowance, okay? Um, as it folds over that thread, right? These are nice big pieces. I'm gonna be trimming down a lot of this anyway. I am gonna plug my iron back in though, hang on. Because we're gonna need it in a moment. Ooh, I'm also gonna want my clapper. Let me go get my clapper. These are gonna be pretty big pieces that I'm gonna be trimming down anyway. So I'm not overly concerned about losing a thread width of fabric on this pattern. That's just, that's not going to affect my quality of life very much. But just keep that note in your head that that would be one of the reasons why if we're wanting to aim for like very precision piecing, we would switch, okay? All right, I'm also gonna adjust my stitch length because Hillary had it pretty big. All right. And I went and I got my pressing station set back up because we're going to want to press the wings of these as we are going along. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. Try. Rex. Open up your wings. Whoop. They're going to make our block, okay? Line up your Rex unit. The skinny part is at the bottom of your try, and see how taking that notch out allows it to line up with the bottom of the unit. Now these, as you're positioning these, position them very gently. We've got a lot of bias edges going on. So you don't wanna do a lot of tugging, all right? Whoop. And I'm going, there we go. I'm going to drop a couple of pins in so that as I line these sections up, they stay in place. So I'm not tugging on them as I'm sewing, okay? Your Rex is going to extend beyond the top of your try slightly. All right, and then you're going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Let me grab... A little piece of waste fabric. I'd rather not use my nice fabric as waste fabric. Here we go. Leader ender. Since we're sewing with points, we don't want it to get slurped under. Do not run over your pins. Y'all know all this. And so to the end, okay? I'm gonna stop right there at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my next one. I'm gonna just stack my other side of my tri -rex off here to the side because we're gonna chain piece those in a second. These are going to be so cute, y'all. I'm using a slightly smaller seam um, stitch length than I usually would. These wovens are just, um, I hate to say loose, but that's essentially what it is. It has a looser weave than quilting cotton. And so I'm just using a slightly tighter stitch length or smaller stitch length to just really hold everything very stable. I don't want any stretching or like distortion along that seam. So I'm at like a one six right now. I probably could go, I could go a little longer than that, but just liking it nice and stable. Now the flip side to that is that if I have to unpick, I'm gonna have to be extra careful. 
to not tear my fabric, okay? Because it's gonna be a lot of stitches on a fabric that your seam ripper is gonna wanna snag. So tread carefully, okay? All right. Last one on this side. Just dropping those two pins in. Well, maybe just one pen. Just looked at my watch. I'm like, oh shoot, I want to get a block done. Oh, Hillary doesn't even have this baby on full speed. Come on. All right, use that leader ender. Remember, you could be piecing something with your leaders and enders if you want to be. Something easy like squares. Um, I am going to just snip these apart. There's just a couple of them. And I don't want to tug on this fabric, okay? And let's press. I like to hit the fabric with my iron first. Softens up the fibers. Then finger press the seam open. Hit it with a better press. Spray a flatter. And then finally bring that clapper down. So what this clapper does is it allows you to get a good like firm press down on that fabric and the wood pulls the heat out of the fabric. So it cools it faster in this nice flat position. So you get a nice crisp seam like that. Okay, look how cute those stripes are. I die, y'all. I die. So stinking cute. So repeat that whole process three more times. And really be careful with these. As I mentioned, you know, they have that weave that's a little looser than quilting cotton. Um, I'm really not having any, any issues with fraying. Um, it probably really helps that I like pressed, cut, and then immediately sewed them together, right? But what we do want to just be mindful of is, if, you know, we don't want to accidentally iron them and wiggle that fabric back and forth and end up with any distortion, okay? One more. Voila. All right, we're going to repeat the whole thing with our other little wing. Okay. So line that little notch up and line up our edges and drop a pin. Scoot that piece over, drop another pin, then we can start sewing. And with these especially, I would use that leader and ender. Here, I'm gonna increase that just a little bit. Um, use that leader and ender to help prevent that little corner getting slurped down into the machine, okay? We don't want a big bunchy knot at the end there, all right? Hello, Kate, Tony in Chicago. I'm working on my dogwood blossoms. How exciting is that? I'm so excited. I hope your ears are burning. I was talking about your dogwood blossoms too. Ouch. You know, stab myself in the thumb. It's all good. Can y'all hear the train? How's the weather in Chicago, Kate? Other Kate was saying it snowed this week. Bum, bum. 
Oh my gosh, y'all, I'm so excited to show you these. Da 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 da. All right, let me peek at my calendar really quick. You can't hear the train. Yay, I love that. Um, when I'm not filming, I love that. Where where else am I supposedly live today? Let me see. I'm supposedly live in long arm prep. Hmm. Give me just a second, y'all. I am going to drop a note in long arm prep. <laughs> and I'm going to tell y'all to come ask your questions over here because then we can keep working on this block. <laughs> Emoji. Where's my confetti emoji? All right. Ta -da! Okay. Uh oh. My internet connection is unstable. Can y'all still hear me? Everything looks good on my end, so just let me know. All right, let us chug along. Oh, let me see too, if I can pin this video yet. Let's see if Facebook got its poop in a scoop. <laughs> Of course not. Why would it be so handy as to do that? <laughs> I don't know how y'all are finding this video. Because it is hiding it from me big time. How oh. Had, honestly. What happens if I go and look at Holly and Knight instead of a string and story? Nope. Ba -ba. Nope. So can I pin this as featured from here? Of course not. <laughs> Oh, well. All right. Y'all can hear me. Okay. I'm going to just carry on. We're going to just keep on keeping on. Um, Susan, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I can't find me either for what it's worth. Um, Kate, are you still here? Do you still have admin slash moderator access to the group? If so, did you find me on the wall? And can you pin it? If not, I'll figure it out. Uh, I am kinda. You're kinda here. Okay. Did you did you find me on the feed, Kate? Can you can you pin it? Do you still have the ability, or did you just get a notification? I have no idea. We're doing the we're doing the best we can, y'all. I'm just excited to get to sit here and like actually sew a thing with y'all. All right, where's my leader and ender? All right, same thing. I'm going to snip these apart just to be extra gentle with them. You're deboarding. Okay, yeah, don't please be safe deboarding. <laughs> please, please, please. All right. I'm pressing the other side now. Oh, y'all, these are just darling. Oh my gosh, y'all. Looks like I pattern matched. I have never, I have never looked like I was actually this precise in my life. And it was not, 
I mean, I did the right things for it to happen this way, but the fact that it actually happened this way is really delightful. Look at this. Look at how darling. Okay. Three to go. So one of the characteristics of these looser weaves that you may be able to see is how these corners kind of curl. And that's where using the flatter and a clapper can help. Obviously I'm moving kind of quickly. Um, at home, if I were doing these, I would actually let them sit under the clapper until they finished cooling to help prevent that curling kind of as they, as they curl or as they cool down, they curl a little bit, but it's not a big deal. You just piece it in. Um, you think you did it. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. I appreciate you. I was like, I, this is just really giving me a hard time. All right, and voila, look at, look at those little stripy matchings. Look how cute that is. Now it's gonna be fun. Let's make our petals. So if you're following along in the PDF pattern with me, oh, I guess this actually doesn't have the same page numbers as the PDF, Never mind, because I printed this from what will be the paper copy. Um, all right, we're gonna make our half square triangles. So I am, where have I put my other? Okay, take your smaller square that's going to be your center square. There we go. Your four squares that are same, you're going to put them right sides together. And gasp, we're going to mark our half square triangles. I know y'all are shocked, maybe even horrified, wondering if I'm okay. I am. I just really want these to come out nicely. All right, so drop some pens. Just in each corner, once you get them right sides together, we're going to mark that center line. Naturally, I don't have a pencil handy. <sighs> All right, I'm going to do an abhorrent thing, and I'm going to use a pen. Here we are. It's the Wild West. My pencil is over at the long arm because I was marking over the weekend. All right, I'm just going to draw a light little line corner to corner. All right, and pair up the other two. Make sure they are right sides together. Um, this is going to be mostly important with like these kinds of fabrics that the weave is actually different on one side versus the other, okay? And I'm actually going to flip that over so I can mark on the light side. Same thing, pen. And mark. All right, and then we're gonna sew quarter of an inch away from that little marked line on each side. Now, before I start this, so we're gonna sew a total of four lines. I would recommend also laying out, especially if you're doing what I'm doing right now, right? And you're just making a single block. Um, go ahead and also lay out your center square in a square. Okay, so you're gonna put yeah. You're ultimately gonna end up sewing four squares onto the larger square for those square and a squares. Go ahead and pin two of them in place. And we're gonna alternate sewing these half square triangles and sewing this square and a square. So that this will act as a leader ender, okay? So I'm gonna sew my first. 
stitch line of my half square triangles. This is just like a tiny little efficiency thing, right? Then I'm gonna sew one corner of my square in a square. You could also mark these if you want to be super precise with them, okay? And then I'm going to sew my next half square triangle. All right. Then snips to the back. Bring your square and a square up next. All right, so we're alternating between the half square triangles and the square and a squares. And the single square and a square, singular, sorry. Don't wanna be confusing if I can help it. Okay, and then your half square triangle. I feel like I could get a whole musical scale out of this machine if I uh, got the pacing correct. All right, now we're gonna do a little bit of a pause before we sew this final bit here, right? And we're gonna trim those first two square and a squares. I'm literally just gonna grab my Rex ruler, trim a quarter of an inch to the outside of that corner to corner line you sewed. You will have bonus triangles if you want to pre sew so that you have little bonus half square triangles, feel free. Hello, Marie. Kate got it. Oh my gosh, y'all are heroes. Okay, we're gonna press this open. I'm just loving seeing all y'all's names. I got like my OG crew here with me today. Maybe we maybe we just needed some like OG quilting rock star therapy today. I feel like that might be the vibe. I know I did. When I realized that I could start working on this quilt on this live today, I was like, I'm in. Okay, so you can see we're halfway there on that square and a square. Okay. We're gonna pin the other two into place now. This is where my directionality is going to start to get flawed. Oh, maybe not. If I'm thoughtful about it, I might be able to still make this look intentional. Holy guacamole, that looks good. Okay. Keep my stripes going, stripey directions. Okay, so now I've got this pen, right? I'm going to sew one of these. And this doesn't make it perfectly, you know, it's not perfectly even in terms of like, and then you magically finish them both right at the exact same time. Actually, it might, now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, I might have done this better than I thought I did. All right, so sew that one. Then you've got one more here, right? Half square triangle. Then your final square and a square seam. And then we'll finish with our leader ender to get everything set free from the machine. Okay. There's my half square triangles. Here's my leader ender. All right, and we are gonna trim and press again, but before we do that, oh my gosh, Susan is two weeks away from being able to order her long arm. I love that. All right, before I trim and press these, I'm gonna grab my uh, block lock ruler. Oh, which I hope is here, shoot. Past Holly Ann, did you take it to the house? Oh, past Holly Ann, took it to the house. All right, well, I'll just grab a square ruler. That will make it easier at least. 
So I have a block lock ruler that I would love to use for these half square triangles, but it is living at my house right now. So we will start with this square and a square, right? So we're gonna pull these last two pins out. And just like we did a second ago, we're gonna trim a quarter of an inch from where we stitched. Conveniently, there is a stitch allowance line on this Rex ruler that I'm using to trim these. All right, we're going to press those open too, gently. Oh my gosh, y'all, the pattern matching. Never pattern matched in my life, and it looks so good. That was truly not my intention with this. Is I have stumbled into success on this, y'all, and I am very delighted with it. Look at that. Look at that. I die. All right. Now, our half square triangles. Pull the pins out. Don't stab yourself like I did a second ago. Okay, we're going to need a longer ruler for this because we're going to cut along that line we drew. This will work. Okay. So of course we then have our little split stitch triangles. Set those aside. Do the other one. Y'all, I have like five or six rulers on this table to make this little block. I think that was excessive. <laughs> don't I don't know that I needed that many. All right. Now we're gonna press each of these open. I'm gonna press them open. Gotta go make lunch. Marie, what's for lunch? I'm gonna press these open to the dark side because that is my preference. Come on. They don't want to press to the dark side. I lied. We're going to press to the side they want to press to because these fabrics are different weights. The stripey one is lighter than the darker one. And so the seam wants to go that direction. It means I'm going to have a little white shadow through. That is not something that overly bothers me. Okay. And I'm going to do. The other three as well. I did a pretty good job keeping a straight seam. Look at me go. Mm. Yes, I'm slacking off on my flatter and the use of my clapper because I'm eager to see these come together. Okay, now we're going to trim these down per the directions. All right. Let me start by seeing how much wiggle room I have. Let me check my directions and see how much wiggle room I'm supposed to have. And then we'll know if I did them right or not. I think I may just mostly be taking off my dog ears. Yeah, I'm really just taking off my dog ears. These came out really square, though. Way to go, Holly Ann. All right, so what we're learning is that when I pay attention to details, I'm better at them than I like to talk about. All right, so trim your little dog ears off. I am going to lay each one down under the ruler and just, like, make sure that it came out. So, like, this one came out a little bit big. Just, just a hair. Just a little smudging. So I'm going to, I'm going to trim those extra little threads off. So if you wanted to make your original, if you want to have a lot of room to trim down, you may want to cut these half square triangle squares a little bit bigger. I'm finding that they're coming out really, really close to what they need to be. Um, but they also came out nice and square. So, um, Kisten, oh my gosh, it didn't show up till after 145. Oh my goodness. So Kisten, if you happen to go back and watch the replay, you will see like three different times that I was like, I can't find it to pin it and I don't know what to do. Um, and Kate finally pinned it for us. So I had to, I had to call in help, but I'm thrilled that you're here, Kisten. The replay will be up. Fear not. 
We're making we're making a dogwood blossoms block. It's very exciting. When have we done that? Like 2018? It's throwback day. Throwback Wednesday. Oh my goodness gracious. It's gonna be so good. Um, and if you are here and you are in long arm prep, we would normally be having a Q&A over there right now. Last week was graduation. Um, and I put up a little announcement and said, come find me here. So am I sort of skiving off on that extra Q&A? Maybe. You're welcome to ask long arm prep questions here, though. But I want to finish this block. Being impulsive. Oh, no. Am I still allowed to be impulsive? I don't know. I don't know. We're doing it. All right, let me throw my little bits away. And I'm going to lay out this block. Now, uh, y'all will not super easily be able to see this as I lay it out, unfortunately. So, sit tight. All right, put my center down first. Um, and then I like to actually lay out my Rex, my Tri-Rex units next. Um... Oh my gosh, y'all, it's so good. Because it makes it easier to know which way to turn the half square triangles. Because then you just match everybody. Oh, stop it. It's so good. Y'all, I die. These stripes worked better than I anticipated. Let me just let me just say that now. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Okay, so I've laid out my blocks. You'll get to see them in a minute. Um, oh, Francie Joe, I have missed these two. Let's see. Kissing actually quilted this week. Um, this has been a, in the queue for several years. I love that. I know. Maybe, maybe I'll actually get better about hanging out and sewing a thing. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to web this block. Okay. So that means that I am going to chain piece the first two columns together to start with. All right. And then we will add the third column and then we will sew the row seams. Okay. Oh, I need some water. Now, I did not trim my dog ear on my Tri-Rex, and we're going to find out shortly if I regret that. Um, what you can do if you're unsure, like if you're, if you're really wanting these points to match up, um, is you can pin them like I've done, right? So I've kissed the top of the Tri-Rex and the top of my uh, square and a square together and dropped a pin there. And what you can do is you can just sew like an inch with like a scant, like super scant quarter inch, like eighth of an inch kind of scant to check to see how those are lining up. Um, and then if you need to, you can unpick and reposition. So you can kind of baste them together with a short scant seam and then peel them open if you want to just like really double check that, okay? This is looking a little large to me. Nope, you're okay. Okay. Maybe I just have it twisted. There we go. All right. So these are the last two of that the first columns now you can also get block locks for the tri-rex and trim those down super precisely if you like i will say that is an area where i've chosen not to be fastidious today and i have not trimmed those down and we will we'll see if that proves to be a problem all right Order some chambray. Yes, you do. Oh, and the gingham too. Oh my gosh, Kate. I'm so excited that you said gingham. Y'all, that gingham that I showed you that we got in that's 
it shipped at the same time as technically a different collection, but it has also come in. Um, I have the cutest little quilt planned for it. I ordered the pattern last night. It's in a book, so I'm waiting on the book to come. Um, Kate, right? Doesn't it? I forgot how like quick these blocks come together too. Right? That what we've been live for a little over an hour and we pressed most of the fat quarters, cut out, and am now assembling a block. Like, and honestly, y'all, like I was working on a tiny little table. What I would actually recommend press your fat quarters and cut out two or three flowers and two or three backgrounds at a time. Like don't cut every single one out individually. Like that's ridiculous. Like layer your fabric up, square the edge and cut out several at a time. Cause then this is just going to come all oh, those corners. Those points came out so nice. Oh, I hope these points come out nice. Please come out nice. But yeah, cut out a couple at a time, chain piece them. It's a, it's a pretty small throw. It's 45 inches square. So for me, that's a throw. Um, if you are a, you know, less petite human than I am, that might be more like a lap quilt for you. Um, I'm pretty petite and I, I don't necessarily mind having pretty small quilts. Like I kind of curl up when I cozy with a quilt. Um, so the way to, you know, make it bigger is you just add more blocks. But that 45 inch, I think it's 45 inches. Is that right? Or is it 60? Hang on. 54. Man, I flipped my numbers. 54 inches square. Um, it's just nine blocks. And you just make extra blocks if you want to make it bigger. Or you could add sashing. You could add borders. It's very straightforward. All right. So what I'm going to do now. So I've done what's called webbing. Right. And so now all the pieces of the block are held together where they're supposed to be. All right. And I have two long seams left. See here, webbed together. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the seams that I've already sewn and I'm going to press them going opposite directions. So they're going to nest and that's going to make it easier to sew these two long seams. Okay. So when I give just kind of a gentle little tug on my fabric, that middle row seam wants to press in. So I'm going to let it. Okay. And then I will press the top and bottom out and then they will nest. This orange fabric is a little bit of a heavier weight. I'm noticing a little bit of bulk where those pieces meet one another. You definitely could press these seams open. I'm never successful at pressing my seams open without burning my fingers. So I just avoid it. It's just, it's not for me. <laughs> and yes, I could wear the little finger tippy things. Um, honestly, the honest answer there is I don't want to, as much as that sounds like a little temper tantrum, it kind of is. I just don't want to. Hello, Sue Rickman. All right. Two more seams, y'all. This is so exciting. All right. Once again, shout out to Kate Tony for being like, Holly Ann, dig that pattern out of the archives because I forgot how much I like this pattern too. And we're not even done with the block yet. This is so good. All right, so what I did there, sorry, I got lost in my own head and got excited and was not talking out loud. Um, what I did there was I nested my seams together and dropped a pin in them <laughs> and then sewed the seam. 
you know, I'm, I could have said that entire step out loud. Let's see. Um, Kate's like, I've been aggressive about it, but I stand by it. Look, look where it's getting us, Kate. It is getting us to me making a thing, which is always a good thing. Um, yes, Sue, another Alda Baron. Yes. Okay. So I've got a small um, collective of humans that have been uh, heavily petitioning for uh, the kind of re- re-emerging, re-launching, re-something of the string and story pattern. So Kate is, of course, a big part of that. Um, Brittany over at Lo and Behold as well has been like, you really should like make your patterns. Like, I really like them. So uh, that and then uh, Hillary has been like, oh, and like show off these fabrics on your patterns. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I have patterns. So, um, you know, because you all know, like, I, I love teaching. And so sometimes I forget about the pattern side of things. Uh, but all that to say, Sue, I also, I am, I want to work my way through all of these patterns and make new versions and make them fresh again. And I, you know, want to comb through the directions and make sure that they're good, you know? <laughs> so maybe, maybe we'll be doing some of that all together in the coming times. I don't know. I don't have a formal plan around this. It's just something that is in my brain that I'm excited about. All right. Let me make sure everything went together in the right places. It looks like it did. I've got fabrics all laid out in my loft for another Polaris quilt. I haven't made one of those in a while. All right. Y'all ready? Look how good it is. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me press the seams and then I'll show y'all properly. So exciting. So exciting. Look at this. One block down, only eight to go. I could have a whole quilt by the end of the day if I didn't have other responsibilities. However, I think our Garment Sewing Academy folks would like me to finish shipping their kits. So there's that. Um, so much potential for blog Dogwood Blossoms. <laughs> I agree. I'm so glad you caught it live too, Kate. Look, I'm taking action on your encouragement. And look, Sue, for once, it wasn't your fault. I feel like I'm always blaming for you for stuff, Sue. I'm like, Sue talked me into this thing. This time, Kate gets the blame. Kate talked me into this thing, and I love it. Y'all talk me into the best stuff. I really should listen more. Let's be honest. Okay, here we go. Look at her. She's so pretty. Look at those stripies. Look how fun they turned out. Fun little trip that like they don't perfectly line up. I probably could have worked to line these up a little bit better, but honestly, whatever. Those lined up perfectly. Look at that. Look at that little color change. So fun. So fun. And I love that they're subtle enough that like up close you can be like, Bleh. but then as you back up, it's just like, oh, they sparkle. Da. <laughs> All right. Rockstars, I will let you go. Um, she says, that block always reminds me of the test pattern when TV's first came out. Oh, that's so funny. I love that. I love that. Marie, you're back. Did you see get to the block, Marie? Look at that. I think it looks so nice. One down, eight to go. Hopefully, I make the other eight in a timely manner. Maybe we'll make them together. Who knows? Rockstars, this is Dogwood Blossoms. This is also the Monarch Grove fabric that we just got in. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. It was fun. To, gosh, we did spend almost an hour and a half together. What a fabulous time. Thank you for all of you who are looking for the link. And uh, we're patient as it took Facebook forever to make it findable. Um, and if you're looking for this fabric, this pattern, or any of the other fun things we have around here, I did put links in the caption of this video. Um, and if you end up making a Dogwood Blossoms or end up working with Monarch Grove, I would love to see pictures. All right, I'm gonna let y'all go. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Lisa, you should go back and catch the replay. We made a Dogwood Blossoms block. It's been so long. It was so fabulous. All right, bye for now, y'all. I'll see you soon.